Hey girlies, welcome back to the pod. It's Carmen. Happy Monday. Happy whatever day you're listening. It's a new week. It's a great week here with another episode. And this one is actually something practical. So you're welcome. Sorry, um, no more story times until April. So I don't remember if I said this in the other episode. I probably did, but in case you didn't listen all the way through, which I mean, low-key rude, but it's fine. It only happened once, right? <laughs> um, no, actually, it's fine. But I'm going to be doing a story time episode once a month so then like we can all participate and it's fun but then every other time it's just gonna be normal advice episodes just so we can kind of have a mix of everything and it'll be fun but yeah I have a few story time episode ideas lined up I guess I'll say my top two just so you can like start thinking about it I mean you y'all will probably forget it but some ideas I had were um your school's juiciest gossip and your weirdest or funniest like dreams or whatever. So those were two of my favorites that I thought of. But anyways, this week we're talking about productivity, managing your time for school, for life, for whatever. Pretty much how to just get shit done. How to get shit done. That's all we're talking about today. And it's going to be a really good episode. So of course, first we have the best and worst of the week. So the best of the week is that um I started a new Netflix show last night actually there's been a few good things this week I'll just start with this one though it's called behind her eyes and you know I watched the trailer and I thought to myself wow this looks really cute what a cute little romance show oh no oh honey oh no this is a psychological thriller insert like blinking here mouth jaw dropped what what to say the least I was a little bit disappointed because personally I'm not a big scary movie person but psychological thrillers are kind of fine with me I mean I watch you I don't know if that's technically considered a psychological thriller watch the like Ted Bundy stuff but this is actually really weird and I'm recording this episode on a Saturday. It's like afternoon time or whatever. I truly do not understand what's happening. I mean, of course, yes, I understand what's happening, but also, okay, I'm not doing a good job. You know how you can watch something and you think to yourself, yes, I understand the plot, but also what the hell is going on? So that's what I'm thinking. Motivation to record is that I will watch an episode after so I'm very interested to see what's happening my mom is also watching this and she's ahead of me and I was trying to guess what happened and she was like you're never gonna guess it you're never gonna guess it um anyways everybody should watch that if you're into that another good thing this week well just like a few things I'm still home alone it's day nine day nine home alone wow that's that's a little crazy um yeah day nine my parents neglected me ha <laughs> no i'm kidding it's my sibling spring break so they're all in miami but i had school this week so i just went to school it's actually not been that bad i mean i've stayed home alone before for long periods of time i mean the last time i was home alone by myself it was like five days which wasn't that bad i know some people freak out they're like oh my god how can you do that or oh my god how can you leave your kid by yourself but honestly it's not that bad and I kind of like it. It's fun. It's like I have my own house to myself, which I mean I don't. But going on with that, the worst of the week, this sounds so, so bad, was that my dog came home. So my dog Tilly, the dog with one eye, she's a lab greyhound mix, whatever. We we got her from the pound. Is that what it's called? Humane Society. Whatever it's called, the we didn't the one not a purebred whatever the stuff that's not that is called a mutt yeah so she was staying at another person's house all week since I would be at school all day so I wouldn't be able to watch her but she came back Thursday night because I didn't have school on Friday um I don't know why don't ask so I've been with her last night she woke me up four times which don't get me wrong I love Tilly she's the sweetest girl 
but it was kind of nice just being home alone and actually being home alone. Now I just feel kind of weird when I start talking to myself because she's just giving me like a side eye. Like, okay, bitch, you can't even speak. So let's let's bring down the level. Let's bring down the level, you know? I mean, it's okay. My siblings are coming home tomorrow, so Sunday, and then my parents are coming home on Monday. I'm really excited to see my siblings. They go to boarding school, so I only really get to see them during break or over summer. So I'm very excited to see my sister and I guess my brother. Eh, he's fine. We just kind of forget about him. It's okay, though. So, as I said, today we are talking about how to manage your time, be more productive, school, life, etc. Just some good life skills, because I've gotten a lot of DMs just about this, or people telling me that I'm good at time management, which is honestly kind of funny. I mean, I would say I'm actually... No, yeah, I'm good at it. Um, I was going to say I'm not. No, I am. I would say I'm a pretty productive person. I'm good at managing my time. So you're getting lessons from a pro. I'm a high school junior, so I have a lot going on. I think I'm in three... Yeah, three APs have podcast stuff, extracurricular life stuff. So I'm pretty good at managing my time. So I'm going to give you all my best tips and it's going to be great. But of course, we have quote of the week. I know the past two weeks I've kind of neglected that, but um, it's coming back. I think also for the story time episodes, I'm just going to neglect quote of the week and just kind of leave it out there. But every other time, you're going to get it. This one is actually really good. So I was just looking through Pinterest, right? And I found this and I was like, ooh, damn, this is good. I saw that. My mouth dropped open. How many times have I, am I going to say this in the episode? I think I just get shocked very easily by things. Um, Me watching people's thirst traps on TikTok, just like mouth open. Me on Pinterest, mouth open. Me watching Netflix, mouth open. You know, it's just, I think I need to like, tape my mouth shut or something but whatever and this quote was just so relatable and I was like oh my gosh yes relatable more like relates to the topic of the episode okay I'm just I'm just gonna tell you what it is and stop talking because uh shut up Carmen ah okay so it says the secret of your future is hidden in your daily routine Ooh, yeah I'm gonna say it again the secret of your future is hidden in your daily routine I love this quote, okay? Because I think this really just follows along with the idea that if you're doing little things every day, it's going to become a habit. And once you keep doing that, you're going to set yourself up for success, set yourself up for being healthy, for getting things done. And you doing these little things every day is really going to build up. It's like something my dad always says, uh, what's it called? Oh yeah, since by the, uh, what is this? A cinch by the inch is hard by the yard. Wait. Do you know what I'm saying? Hard by the yard. Mm. Pretty much like doing small things adds up and is easier than just starting out doing a bunch of big things. Um, But I can't speak apparently today. So there's that. That means this episode is going to go really well. It's going to be so successful. Um, You already know. Also, speaking of episodes, so I was listening to the Wild Till 9 podcast earlier. So funny. I'm literally obsessed with it. And they had Pretty Basic on. And it was so good. And they're honestly kind of icons, the girls on Pretty Basic, because... I don't know. I just want my podcast to be like that because they're cool. They're so successful. I don't know. But my daily routine is going to give me my future. So there you go. There there you go. So don't forget to leave a review, subscribe, follow, do all the things. You already know I say this two times in every episode, so make sure you go do it and I'll love you forever. And before we get into it, I'm going to take a quick water break and then I'll be right back. And I'm back. Hey guys, what's up? Let's just get into all of the tips. So pretty much I kind of tried to break them up to just school and life stuff. But I think most of this can apply to everything. I guess I'll just start with the school specific things. So first of all, that would be to study in advance. So, oh, before I say all of this, Yes, take notes, get stuff out, get your phone, notes app, um, open that up, write it down. You're going to want to write this all down because it's super helpful. Um, so don't be like me. 
be proactive, okay? Because I know in the past when I've done this, you succeed, you do so well. And then you feel really fulfilled because you're like, yes, I crushed that test. I'm so smart. I'm going to get an A in the class. And then you're like, high five. Ooh, yeah. Give me some. So study in advance. And the way that I like to do this, well, first of all, it helps if you write it down. So like when you have the test and immediately when your teacher tells you, hopefully at least a few days in advance, um, you're going to want to start studying the first day that they tell you that you're going to have a test in the future. Maybe it's a Monday and you have a test on the Wednesday. Start studying on Monday. Don't wait till tomorrow. Yes, you might be tired. Yes, you might not want to do it. Yes, you might want to watch Behind Your Eyes on Netflix. Okay. Okay, everybody. But you can't. You need to study first. And it helps if you have a little incentive, okay? This is kind of what I do all the time, is that I like to do the stuff that I least want to do first, so I get that over with. I do this with homework and just, like, life stuff. So whatever I'm dreading doing, that's what we're doing first, ladies. That is what we're doing first. So let's say, for example, you have homework, you have to do a physics review packet, edit an essay for English, study for your calculus test about um, inverse trig functions. I don't know. Um, watch some or do some textbook reading for A-push and you're like, okay, A-push in English. Those are my favorite classes. Those are easy. Physics, not that hard. I'll do that. Yes. Then you're like, but, okay, but I really don't want to study for math. This is when, okay, this is when you're going to think. Think back to this episode and be like, what did Carmen say? What did my amazing, beautiful friend say? Oh, yeah, do the thing you least want to do first. That way you get it over with. And then you'll be like, okay, I just have to do this and then I can do all this other stuff. And that's what's so helpful. And then you won't try to like procrastinate um, actually doing it. So study in advance. There you go. That was tip number numero uno. <laughs> Speaking of that, um, Spanish. So my mom always gets mad at me because I'm in Spanish five, right? So hypothetically, I should be pretty good at Spanish, which I mean, I would say I'm decent, but my mom gets really mad because she says that I have no accent and that I sound very American, which I am American, so like, I don't know. Also, another funny thing. Do you ever just try to do an American accent? I was trying to do, I was trying to say something like kind of in a Scottish accent the other day because in Behind Her Eyes, one of the characters is Scottish. So I was, I'm going to butcher this so badly. It was just someone's last name. Please, if you're Scottish, I'm sorry. I'm not trying to make fun of you. I'm like, was actually trying to do this for like 30 minutes, but I was like, Ferguson, Ferguson, like saying Ferguson, but like, I don't know. I couldn't do it. It was like, Ferguson. Ferguson. I don't know. But I was trying to do, be like British, which of course, of course I can't do that. And I don't even know if I want to say, oh, yeah, I will. Um, I might have to edit this out. Oi! <laughs> Is that Australian? Um, bloody hell! What did they say? You bloody bastard! Is that good? I don't know. I'm gonna listen back to this and be like, what the fuck? Shut up. Um, but anyway, yeah, so I have, like, no Spanish accent. Uh, I guess I'll say something for you guys. Um, Hola, me llamo Carmen. Ooh, muy bien. Buen trabajo, puta. Hey. So there you go. You're welcome for that. Me actually trying to do an accent. If anyone actually speaks Spanish, I'm truly sorry. Um, please don't roast me. I know it's bad. I know it's bad. Me, in Spanish 5, the only thing I could immediately remember how to say was, like, my name is Carmen. <laughs> it's okay. It's fine. Okay, anyway, sorry for just everything. But next tip for school, 
is to ask for help. And you're like, what? Carmen, how's that managing my time? How's that being productive? Well, this is called being proactive. So I'm just going to use the example of math class for me, my calculus class, because I'm not good at math. I struggle with math the most. So that's just going to be our consistent example. So let's say um, in my math class, we're starting a new unit. And we just finished a whole unit on integrals inverse trig functions derivative in derivative of the inverse whatever we did all that and I was like yes got it but there's a test coming up and I still can't take the derivative of a natural log but I'm too scared to ask my teacher I don't know what to do so I'm like well I guess I'll just watch a bunch of videos online. I guess I'll just look it up. And yes, that is great. Yes, I truly do suggest, if you don't understand something, looking at videos, of course, trying to like teach it yourself helps. Trying to get all the information, asking a friend. Okay, so here are the first things you're going to do if you don't know something. You are going to look it up online, watch a video, um, read an art article. Personally, I prefer videos. Next, if you still don't understand, ask a friend in that same class. Ask a friend who understands, ask them to try to explain it to you. Let's say they understand, but their explanation didn't really make sense. Then that's when you're going to ask your teacher. And you can do this online or just walking into their room, depending on if you're online or in person. Definitely email them if you're still online. Try to schedule like a call with them just so you can ask them a question. If it's a quick question, just email it. Ask for help. My IQ went down a lot. I had to reteach him how to multiply exponents and how to find a common denominator. He is in pre-cal. Um, nothing against him. I'm sure he's a great guy, but did not know his math, did not know his math. And him and his friend were both saying how they never do the homework and how they both have 60% in pre-cal. I was like, y'all, you can at least have a C or a B just by doing the fucking homework. Literally, it's so easy. Just do your goddamn homework, guys. Ah! Okay, so going back to actual tips for school. Um, Those were my two big things just for school. Study in advance, ask for help. Okay, the next tips are can kind of just be for life stuff too. This is like school and life in general. So the next thing is to set timers slash time block. For me, it always helps to have a little bit of a schedule, have some structure in my life to feel like I'm doing something correct, right? Um, so if you're not feeling motivated to study or to do homework, it really helps if you set even a 20 minute timer. Working in short time intervals can really help, especially if you're just trying to just get into starting your homework. I mean, you don't have to do it the whole time because those timers can get a little distracting. But if you just need something to help start you out, then just start with a 20 minute timer, five minute break, 20 minute timer, five minute break, and you'll be good to go. And you can also time block. That's just where in your schedule you're going to block it. So like five to six, study for a push test. Six to six thirty, physics homework, whatever. And this will make you motivated to finish your assignments in this allotted time. So you're not going to be spending all night doing something you could have done in 20 minutes. And that's just super helpful. I probably don't do this as much as I should, but if you think like you spend way too much time on something that shouldn't take that long, set timers because this goes into my next tip, but it's so easy to get distracted just sitting in your room. And that's why I like to put away my phone and it helps if you put it out of sight. So you can put it behind your laptop, in a drawer, across the room, maybe in your closet, put it outside your room, give it to a parent. Just get it out of your sight, get it out of your room even. However tempted you feel, like if you feel very tempted, put it as far as you can, okay? I don't care, put it in your fucking mailbox, literally whatever. Just get it out of your sight and you won't get as distracted. Because I know when I'm doing homework, if my phone's just sitting there, like, oh, I'll just go on TikTok for five minutes. And it's two hours later, 
and I'm still watching thirst traps on TikTok, okay? So put away your phone. This goes the same for online classes. Um, Just put away your phone. I know it's so easy to get distracted. I was online all first semester. It's so, so, so easy. So that's why during online school, when I was doing that, this is when I actually like to put my phone behind my laptop. So in case I need it, I can get it, but also it's not just sitting right next to me. And if you don't feel comfortable with that for whatever reason, you can just try to flip your phone upside down so that the screen is not facing up. And that is also helpful because it won't be as tempting. Turn off notifications, do not disturb, whatever. Shut your phone all the way off, all the things. Just get it so it's not as big as of a distraction and you'll be good to go. Also relating to that, another way you can be more productive is by actually paying attention in your classes. And this is in a way very productive because then you're gonna be spending less time outside of school actually studying and having to reteach yourself stuff that was taught in the class. Who does that? What? I don't know that word, but when you actually participate, you're kind of learning it because you're saying stuff out loud. You're learning the actual material rather than if you're just sitting there watching TikTok. So being an active participant in class, yes, it can suck sometimes, but if you have school, you might as well be in school because then you'll spend less time outside of school doing actual schoolwork when you could be having fun, when you could be using that time to watch TikTok, that time to watch your new Netflix show, to read your book, to go outside, to work out, to go for a drive, to go out to eat, whatever. Actually pay attention in school and you'll have more time outside of school to do all the fun things. Period. Thanks for coming to my TED Talk. Next thing is my absolute must-have favorite tip, life-saving, all those words, all those clickbaity words, but I'm serious. This, I live by it. I live by it. Make to-do lists, okay? Whether you use a planner, just some notebook, the notes app on your phone, make a to-do list write stuff down, write down all your assignments. What I like to do is I just have a lined notebook that's from Amazon or something. And I write out like each day of the week. So on Monday, Tuesday, blah, 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 et cetera, all the way to Sunday. So then each day when I'm at school, when the teacher says the homework, I'll take it out and write down my assignment. You can also use, I know, because I was talking about this with some of my friends, but you can use an app or website. I don't know what it is exactly. It might be both. But write stuff down, put it in your phone, put it in your laptop, put it wherever you're going to see it most, wherever you're going to remember it. And you can experiment with different things. And this is so helpful for keeping track of all your appointments appointments, all your assignments, whatever you have going on, especially for school. Um, so just do that, write a to-do list. I also like for school um, to write the order that I want to do in. So if I have study for physics test, read in a push, um, prepare for Harkness and AP Lang, then I'm going to do like one the AP Lang homework, two, study for physics, three, A push, whatever. And that helps so then you actually have a plan. And again, I would put the either the hardest things first or the things that you least want to do. And I know a lot of people are going to say you should do the things, the easy, little easy things first because they'll give you easy wins and make you feel more motivated. But honestly, I've done it both ways. And in my experience, it truly just feels best to get it done, get the worst thing done. Because I know when I do the easy things first, I make those take longer. So then I don't have to do the harder thing until later, which again, mega waste of time. Just get the hard things done and you'll be good. You'll be good to go. You'll be golden. So invest in a planner. Doesn't even have to be a planner. It can be a freaking piece of paper, notes app on your phone, use Notion, use Google Keep, whatever. Just write stuff down and you'll stay so organized for school and then also for life. I would definitely suggest using a calendar. I have one on my desk. I also have used the one in my phone, the one on my laptop. I have multiple. I have one on my desk that I just have school stuff on. And then I have one on my phone. I use the Google Calendar that has 
um, appointments, but the one in my room is when I have tests. So it helps. I know also on the Google Calendar, I think I had an episode about this. I swear I've talked about this before. Truly do not remember what it's called. But if you scroll back, should be somewhere. I think I talked about the Google Calendar, but you can color code things. So if you have something maybe school related, sports related, those can be different colors. And that will also help you that will also keep you organized. Sorry, I cannot speak. Okay. Whew. I think I have three more tips for you and then you'll be a good to go. You'll be a productivity king, queen, icon, whatever. You're amazing. Literally just want to pause and say that because I feel like you don't hear that enough. And I just wanted to let you know that you're amazing. I love you. I'm sending you all the good vibes all the good vibes, okay? And just know that it's okay. And I want to just say something too, is that you don't have to be productive all the time. That is so unrealistic. No one is productive all the time. And I think that's something we all need to remember. But there are things that you can do to make yourself more productive. So you might as well. That's what this episode is for. It's not me just saying you need to be productive all the time because no one is. I'm not you're not, your mom isn't, your dad isn't, my dog Tilly is 100% not. So just wanted to take a quick break to say that. But next tip, speaking of breaks, take breaks, guys. You don't need to cram for three hours straight. That is ineffective. You need to take breaks. Take time away from what you're doing. If you're doing a super hard math problem, you're crying. We've all cried over math homework, okay? You're crying. You just can't do it. Go outside. Take a walk. That's one of my favorite things. Just go out, walk my dog. Maybe go on TikTok. That might not be the most helpful though. But doing something other than work, maybe making a snack, okay? Even that's a break. Going to your sibling's room, going to talk to them, going to go pet your dog, just taking a little break, taking time away from your work will really help you kind of refocus your mind, help you see more of an outside perspective. Because when you're doing something, it's very easy to get locked into one viewpoint and not be able to see other things. So just taking a break, backing away, and just really trying to focus on other things for a short period of time, I think will really help you and will also motivate you to get back into it and to finish your assignment quicker rather than just sitting there for two hours saying, I can't do it. I can't do it. So that's why we take breaks. Breaks are very helpful. They can come in many forms. Exercise, snacking, going to go out, going out to eat. Also a big thing, okay? I just want to mention this because this isn't something that this is something that I hadn't realized until this year. But when I was doing online school, I'm just saying that because I can't remember the last time this happened. But my mom would ask me if I wanted to go out to eat after school. And I would always say, no, mom, I have so much homework. I'm so busy. I have so much stuff to do. But on the days that I did say, say yes, I noticed that I literally finished my homework earlier than I did when I didn't go out to eat with her. So things like that, taking a break and then coming back to your work, that is so, so, so helpful. And yes, it might feel like you're gonna get behind, but trust me, you're not. If you have enough discipline and know like, okay, if I go out to eat, then I'm just gonna start homework when I get home. If you know that, then you're fine. And it really helps you to refocus. And I think that it can be super helpful. And I know it's so easy in high school, especially to feel like you're so busy all the time. You have so much work. You can't hang out with anyone. But you you should hang out with people. You should prioritize your friends, okay? And I promise when you do this, school will just become something else you have to do. Just another thing on your to-do list. But hanging out with your family, hanging out with your friends should always be your priority and then school. And I'm not saying you should like fail school because obviously no, but school isn't the only thing that matters. Life matters. School isn't everything. Grades aren't everything. And I feel like that is said enough. And I wish I like someone was there to tell me this. So just wanted to say that. So 
Relating to taking breaks and one of the ways you can take a break, exercise. So over the spring, I was getting really into yoga. I feel like I mentioned this in almost every other video, but I was getting really into yoga. I was following videos from Yoga with Adrian. I was doing some at-home workouts from Chloe Tang, who honestly, she is very annoying. But I was doing her workouts. I was doing the workouts from Mad Fit. I actually love her. Her dance workouts are so bomb. But I'm doing that, and I was feeling confident. I was feeling good. I would work out every day after school, then do some homework. And that's when I really felt my best. And I have noticed that when I exercise or eat well or do things that are actually good for my body, my work is better. I feel better. I feel more motivated to do things. I'm not half falling asleep in school. And I that's really important. So this tip is pretty much just about like getting good habits. Your habits are really going to make you more motivated, more productive, better at managing your time. Because, I mean, if you're going to bed at a reasonable hour, you don't have to go to bed at, like, 9 p.m., but 10, 11, whatever. If you're going to bed, like, at 11, you're fine. That's good. You would, you'll feel more motivated, more awake tomorrow than if you went to bed at 4 a.m. So, a lot of the things you do aren't necessarily specific to school or whatever, but they have a... They have an effect. So your sleep matters. What you eat matters. Eat breakfast. I know I don't eat breakfast every day. That's just because I feel nauseous sometimes in the morning. But bring a snack. Eat snacks. Eat breakfast. You'll feel more motivated. This is like when you're taking a standardized test and the everyone always tells you bring a snack, bring water, sleep well the night before. Pretty much treat every day like you're going to take a standardized test except for without all the <laughs> test anxiety, you know. But honestly, funny story. When I took the ACT, I was more worried about, like, people seeing me there than the actual test, which is so, so stupid. Like, why? That makes zero sense. Honestly, sometimes I don't even understand myself, like, at all. But, you know, whatever. So pretty much have better life habits, and you'll be able to manage your time better. You'll be more productive. I feel like being healthy, eating well, drinking enough water, going to sleep at a reasonable time, exercising, all those things relate to so many other aspects in your life. So again, it's just important to have healthy habits if you want to manage your time better, be more productive, all the things. Okay, last thing is life can get pretty stressful. School can get really stressful, especially if you're a junior or a senior and you're doing college things, or maybe even if you're in middle school, you're in eighth grade and you have to figure out where you want to go for high school. It can all be really overwhelming. So I think this is why it's important to take a break again and also just find something you love. Do something that you're doing just for you not for some stupid college resume, some application, not because your mom wants you to do it, not because your school is requiring it, but because you want to do it. You love it. And even if you're sitting there, you're like, what the hell, Carmen? I don't know what I love. I don't know what I like to do for fun. That's okay. And I actually have an episode related to this called How to Start a Passion Project, I think, maybe. Passion Project, somewhere in the word. Definitely check that out after this episode, but find something you love. Find something you like doing. For example, for me, that's this podcast. I think it's fun. And I mean, yes, it's something that I can put on my college resume, but also another thing that I do just for fun, just for me, and kind of a self carry way is reading. Okay, I love, love, love to read. So that's something fun that I do. So just find something fun that you can do and something that can take your mind away from the stressful things about school, stressful things about life. Maybe you like to color. You could paint. Oh my god, I used to love, love, love painting. Painting is good. Reading is good. Something that's just relaxing. Yoga, maybe. I don't know. I pro If you're more of an extroverted person, you might want to be doing something else. These are just like my introverted ideas. But find something you love to do. Something that's relaxing. Something that can take your mind away from 
really stressful things going on from school, test grades, social situations, just something you can do by yourself and that you think you'll enjoy. And if you f- start something new, like this sucks, just quit, okay? You don't have to keep doing something just because you don't like it. And that's similar to like, if you're reading a book and it truly sucks, but you're like, I need to finish the book. No, you don't. No, you don't. Stop it. Get a new one. It's so easy. Just stop reading. So if you start something new because you think you're going to like it and you end up don't liking it, start something new. And that's okay. Leave a review, subscribe, follow, do all the things. Thank y'all for listening to this episode. I really hope it was helpful. I truly tried my best to give some of my most helpful tips, or at least just giving things that have helped me in the past and things that I know that I need to work on. I just want to let you know that I am not some productivity machine. I still procrastinate. That's still a thing. But there are things you can do to make yourself better, to make yourself manage your time better. And yeah, I hope you took notes. If not, feel free to listen again if you want. But make sure all the links in the description of this episode to find my blog, newsletter, email, etc. You guys already know there's a bunch of fun things down there. And make sure you also follow me on Instagram and TikTok at the Girly Girl Podcast if you aren't already. And again, thank you so much for listening. I appreciate you. I love you. You're bomb. You're the best. I'm sending you so much good vibes. I hope you have an amazing week. And I'll see you next week. Bye. Love y'all.